Hi everyone. In this video I'll continue assembling the car from Cyberpunk 2077. In the last part one removed all body parts from Mazda and put Quadra Viteca's body on it, I cut it a little and put it on in advance. I also completely dismantled the cabin. Now I want to put the whole thing on the wheels which is not quite simple because Mazda's body needs to be adjusted to the new wheels and they should have a certain diameter in order to approach Quadra's arch. I began working from the rear wheels. Quadra's arches are quite large and therefore the wheels are not small. We need to increase Mazda's arches by cutting off the excess metal from them. There's already a strong corrosion in some places coming through. Well, we also need a thick layer of putty. Then I began to saw the underwing itself. I made the cut a bit lower so it'd be possible to pack the arch again. I'll make it with the help of notchings, but beforehand I'll remove the entire putty which will just serve as an obstacle in future. I bent the saw cuts along the arch which further will be welded and covered with the under seal. I won't do this yet since I may have to increase the arch many a time and oft. I didn't run the venture to saw Quadra's body in half and remove the entire rear part aligning it with the wheels. I decided to simply transfer Quadra VTEC as fiberglass arch. We need to cut a small piece from the bumper and add some part from the door side. I'll probably glue this part when I get at the doors of the cyber car. In the meantime I bought her 20 tires, they are 79 centimeters in diameter just along the Quadra's arch. Chose the right size using a bus calculator. Since I already have our 20 discs from the tractor I'll use them to assemble the wheel. They won't go into the final version of Quadra VTEC as they are very heavy. And to make a transitional separator for the disc you need to spend a lot of money. By the way not everyone is able to make a separator of such big diameter. Until I have no normal wheels I'll use these discs. I'll level arches according to them and Quadra's body. The car will also be able to move across the garage with the help of them and even go out if needed. But don't take these wheels too seriously, they purely serve as a stand for Quadra. I found one simple solution to fix such discs to the stock. Instead of a separator I'll use a steel disc that fits Mazda's pitch circle diameter. It's just about 12 centimeters that we're lacking. But there's one snag, the disc cannot be installed in this position as it will interfere with the brake caliper. We need to deploy the disc's center part. The same thing I did with the front wheels of the buggy. Thus the extension length is increasing without cutting the disc. I deployed the central part and welded. Now it is possible to weld two discs to each other. I used small separators made of the cut rod. Since it's just a stand template I leveled this disc not so much and there was a small beat. I drilled a new hole for a nipple as the old one became closed by a welded disc. After the disc has cooled down we were ready to put the rubber on it. Although the tire tightly adjoins the disc it still eases the air, so I decided to use the inlet tube.
Here we have such a wheel with a separator welded to it. It needs to be screwed in its place. It turned out too high, the clearance comes to a normal position under my weight. This can be solved by cutting off the spring coil or buying the springs with lowering or in extreme cases carrying a couple of cement bags in the trunk. I made the same thing from the other side only checked how low the body with a standard suspension can be lowered on such wheels. I removed the shock absorber strut for check. The suspension evenly allows the arch to lie on the wheel. There's even a small damping action reserve. I'm finished with the back part, now we need to put the front suspension on the wheels. To do this I ordered 60mm thick transition separators with 139.7mm pitch circle diameter in contrast to standard 1114.3. They are quite large, but since they're made of aluminum they have a small weight. I bought 18 stamped discs. The largest size that I managed to find. I took the steel ones in order it'd be possible to make wide wheels from them. The separators perfectly approached both the discs and the stock. The separator size was ordered in that way there'd be some space to weld the disc apart, therefore it's sunk now into the arch. In order to level this thing I'm just gonna deploy the disc, the shape of the disc and the separators allow us to make it. Now the disc stands exactly along the arch. Also according to the tire calculator, I picked up the rubber for it, but this time it turned out 20 millimeters in diameter less than it was needed. Although calculator always gave out the correct size this time it was very mistaken or maybe it was all about the tire. Of course we can also take into account the wear factor, but it's just a few millimeters on each side. I'll leave this tire as it won't be very difficult to change it. We still need to realize how such wheel will be turning in the arch. Nothing interferes with it in front as there's a void. But at the back it abuts on the body fillet. It needs to be sawn off or better to just fit in. I put the wheel on the other side and checked how the wheel with the drain shock absorber stand would look like. It turned out very high. It'll be necessary to remove the struts and see how the suspension will work in a low position and how the wheel will be looking in the arch. Until I cut the hood I had to lift the front body part to remove the shock absorber struts. Now we need to remove the spacer bar and the shock absorbers themselves. On the left side the shock absorber was taken off without any problem, but on the right side there were some difficulties. That means there seemed to be quite heavy hit into the left side of this car, it's also clear that the left shock absorber was replaced, and the other one still seemed to stay since the first day. I completely lowered the car until the front bumper touched the floor. I decided not to cut the springs yet, and put the shock absorber back without them.
In this case an air suspension would be much more suitable, at least on the front axle. The rack laid on the bump stop and the wheel in the arch looked as it should and also turned normally against the stop and the steering rack. I think we can leave those native struts, but instead of the springs we'll put the air cushions otherwise the front bumper will get damaged. This vehicle with such wheels arises in me a feeling of enthusiasm and wild delight. By the way I didn't put up the racks on the right side to see how the car stands in the lowest possible position. So why did the front clearance get so low? There are two solutions. Since the developers didn't give me the original model, I made it according to another model where the front wheels look like bagels. Such tires are okay, but you won't be able to turn them. Also the original model has the front wings with a skew going to the bottom, and in our case they level with the hood. You can raise the clearance by lowering the front wing, make an insert, or redesign the wings as in Quadra Viteca's game model. As the result we'd get 10 centimeters of clearance. If to lift the bumper a little there will be 13 to 14 centimeters which is already good, but I still want to leave everything as it is. I am inclined to the air suspension and adjustable altitude on situation. For now I put the plastic hobs instead of springs on the shock absorber rod to try to drive a bit along the workshop and such setup. While the removement of the racks I immediately thought about the energy storage device and removed the wires to the cabin for it. Seemed there were no new errors appeared on the dashboard, only the airbag icon flashed as I took them off with the cabin. Tried to start the car but something went wrong. Most likely because of the downtime it discharged a little. I already know from my own experience that this rotor doesn't like discharged batteries, so it needs to be changed for a charged one. I changed the battery and turned the key again. The car started without any problems. I engaged a gear and tried to move off and also twist the wheel. Now it's difficult to judge how this car is driven, but it feels to move off the same way, and due to the power steering you don't feel the gravity of the wide wheels. It's a pity that it is winter outside, in other case we could already make the first ride. Now it's already clear how this car will look in the future, as well as what kind of wheels will be needed, and how to refine the suspension for a more comfortable ride on our roads. Of course the stocks on such wheels will have to bear tons of loads, but still this car is not for everyday usage, so I think they will be enough for a long time. And that's all for today, thanks everyone for your attention. If you like the video put your thumbs up, share this video on social networks. Be sure to sign up, see you in the next video.